the first time I met Jeff, uh, somebody brought him to my house, and I started out with, oh God, who brought this meth head to my house? He's into <laughs> tattooing. What am I doing? Oh, what's going on? Because we were a suit at the and, time? And by the, yeah, it was pure suit. So by the end of the night, we were talking about how Shelby Foote's second volume is the best in the Civil War, but there's so much more there, and we were just, just best friends then. Um, <laughs> seriously. All right, good evening, Caden. Good evening, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Good evening, America. This is Justin and Caden at Seek in Context. And you were just listening to Brian Gosar, the manager of Vishnu Bunny. It is a tattoo parlor in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And he was talking about the founder and owner, my cousin, Jeff Mann. And this episode is titled, There's So Much More There, because I'm hoping that we might for people that aren't familiar with the tattoo industry, and I am uninked. I got nothing on me. I don't didn't know anything about this world. You, Caden? No, no ink. No ink. Okay, so we're we're two inkless interviewers for this uh, tattoo parlor, and so we did not. I did not get shot. I did not get intimidated, um, and we had a really good time learning about the world of Vishnu Bunny, also learning about Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and learning how interesting uh, their world is, how, how much passion they have for the art, and um, how, how interesting the business is. Um, there is a lucrative opportunity here if you're an artist or if you're thinking about wanting to do something. Uh, I had no idea. And so I hope you'll stick around and hear about the, the wisdom and excitement and the career path of people that go into this world. Uh, before we get into the episode, Caden's going to tell you about our sponsors and how you can support the show. Of course. So we'll start off with thanking our first official sponsor, the High Plains uh, Barbershop Chorus in Hayes. And if you want to know more about them, they're at Seeking Context, episode 33. So thank you for being our first official sponsors. And if you want to support our podcast, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can like us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitch. And you can subscribe to us wherever you get your audio podcasts. And if you want to give a monetary donation, we have a Buy Me a Coffee at Buy Me a Coffee slash, coffee slash Seeking Context. And you can give a donation. And if you give any donation, you get the backlog of all the uh, unused clips we might have not shown to the public. So if you want more context from Seeking Context, you can check some of those out. Right. And we also, before we start the show, want to mention this is our first after hours Seeking Context. That's right. Uh, Live events and travels. Uh, we, we thought we might broadcast this episode earlier this afternoon, and I hope we didn't upset you with our new time slot. But if you like <laughs> us on After Hours, then let us know on Facebook, let us know on YouTube. And uh, thought this might be appropriate because uh, I have a feeling this new bunny is still open. People are probably getting tattoos right now. That's right. It's uh, not too late for us to both get inked up right now. <laughs> Live. And so, uh, with that, I am going to go ahead and uh, start the interview with, uh, this is just with Jeff Mann, and so everyone, please enjoy. All right. All right. Hello, Hello Sioux, Sioux Falls, Falls, South, South Dakota. Dakota. Hello, America. America. This, this is Justin, Justin at Seeking Context, and I am here with Jeff Mann. He is the proprietor of Vishnu... Vishnu Bunny Tattoo and Piercing. Vishnu Bunny Tattoo and Piercing. Uh, Jeff is my cousin, mm -hmm. and I am excited to continue our series on entrepreneurs and business leaders and find out about the world of tattoo artists and tattoo uh, business. So I would like to start by just asking you, like, can you just tell me about the shop? Like if a person's interested in getting a tattoo or a piercing, what is this new bunny about? Um, well, uh, I, I, I guess to sort of preface that, um, I have been tattooing for almost 30 years. Mm -hmm. I've owned my business for 22. And uh, over that time, like we've seen a lot of changes in how people uh, get tattoos, how they, uh, just the processes as far as uh, people reaching out, establishing a design. Um, my shop here kind of lives somewhere. There are uh, historically sort of two types of shops. You have street shops where you think of an old tattoo shop, you walk in, you pick a design off the wall, and that's what you get. Mm -hmm. um, and the newer model of shops are more uh, custom design shops where you would set a consultation with an artist, uh, come in and meet, discuss a project, and design a custom piece of art. Um, my, my shop kind of has one foot in both of those worlds. Okay. So we try to accommodate um, on-the-spot walk-ins for art, and we also uh, do a, a, a lot of consulting and designing bigger custom pieces. That's cool. And so just to kind of frame 
the context for people that aren't familiar with tattoos, what's the range of uh, cost when you're uh, getting a, a piece of art on your body? Um, well, our, our shop minimum is uh, at a hundred dollars right now. Okay. Um, and that will usually get you something, you know, from a little dime sized tattoo up to maybe like a 50 cent piece, mm -hmm. just a simple, small design. Um, and really from there, the sky's the limit. I mean, uh, like detailed, extensive full back pieces can cost up to $10,000 and be, wow. you know, 10 to 20 sessions of work. So, right. And if I'm interested, I've never had a tattoo and I say, okay, I'm going to do this $200 tattoo mm -hmm. on my arm for the first time. Uh, how long is that going to take? How much is it going to hurt? And what, what do I need to do to, where does my mind need to be to make that the right thing for my first tattoo? Um, I, well, the last part of that, that that's always kind of on you. <laughs> you, you We're better, not a counseling you be, service. Right. You okay, better be sure okay. before you get here. Um, I mean, of course, we'll, we counsel with people, you know, do you, do you want to be able to see your tattoo regularly? Do you, is that not an issue? Do you want to be able to hide it in business settings? Do you, you know, what are your set of demands or needs from the tattoo you're getting? And mm -hmm. certainly we'll sit and talk about options. Um, Placement of a tattoo can change the difficulty of applying, so it can affect the price. Mm -hmm. um, you had said sort of a $200 tattoo, and I would usually tell people you're looking an hour and a half to two hours for the entire process for something in that price range. Right. Which sort of broad stroke typically would be kind of like a softball size tattoo, like maybe something up on your arm or your chest. Mm -hmm. And uh, how does it work for actually the, the process of getting it you, you put a stencil on the person um how does how does a person what, 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 what do they go through when they when they're getting a tattoo what can like what should they expect to experience sure um I, most of the time we do work with a stencil we use like a carbon-based stencil that we transfer onto the skin mm -hmm. it just gives us a template for the outline and then you just have a visual reference to as far as how you're going to shade color and finish the piece out Right. Um, sometimes some artists, uh, it, if your comfortability level with art, uh, some artists will take a Sharpie and just draw. And I, I have certain types of art that I'm more comfortable and I, I like the sort of the free form ability to be able to sit down with a Sharpie and just draw one off design mm -hmm. on somebody. Right. And then when they go to actually uh, put the, like do the, what do you call it? What do you call this device? Execute the tattoo, I guess. Execute. We call them tattoo machines. Uh, many <laughs> so many call them tattoo guns. And okay. that, in, in the tattoo world, that winds up being frowned on. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and you were talking yesterday just about like the, the technique that like how you have to like stretch the skin and you have to, to make it. Can you just sort of describe some of those things about like when, when a person is being a tattoo artists, how, how that, how that process works, what you have to do to make the, make the design on the paper look like what you wanted on the skin. Sure. And, and that gets into why you, you really always want to have a stencil or a Sharpie. You want to have an established line work or diagram of what your tattoo is going to be on the skin in its relaxed position. Uh, to get ink into the skin, you have to use your, whichever, if you're a left-handed artist, you're going to use your right hand, vice versa. And you have to actually stretch the skin taut to get ink in. So mm -hmm. if you don't have that stencil as a reference and you stretch the skin and think you're going to pull a straight line, when you let go, it's not going to be straight because you've stretched your canvas. Right. So then you, when you stretch it, you like follow the way the stencil, however it happens to look at that moment. Always trust your stencil. Always yes. trust the stencil. That, that is okay. one of the... One of the first rules of tattooing. So. Yep. Are there are there other rules? Oh, maybe. Okay. <laughs> Trade so. secrets. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, and talk about the, the the more custom work. How does that work? If I want to get something, I just give one of your artists an idea, and they come back to me in two weeks with a presentation. How does that happen? Um. Sure. You know. I, again, there are many versions of that. Some people will come in with a a photograph of an existing tattoo on another human that they really like and mm -hmm. we're not going to appropriate someone else's artwork so we can take that and design something that has the same flavor the same kind of concept um, 
I, I kind of have a list of questions when I do consults. Like I'll ask, if, like we'll, we'll get people who aren't sure exactly how they want their design to, to come together. So mm -hmm. I might ask things like, you know, what, what's your favorite color? What's your what's your lucky number? What's your just like anything? Even if we use it for symbolism, if your lucky number is seven, and we might place seven of an object, or mm. um, right, I, there's just lots of different angles as far as how you compose a tattoo design. Right. And for you as a tattoo artist, or I guess I'm curious about tattoo artists in general, do some of them gravitate towards being the creative and coming up with a new design and then some of them are just really more of a, I, I like to do the inking? Um, from the artist perspective? Yeah. Yeah. Is there, are there like, do you have two, like in the web design world, I've got people that are really good at web design mm -hmm. and people that are good at, really good at building the website. And sure. then there's some people that love to do both and they love to go all the way through the process and see the process. Sure. They, want to, they want to put their creative idea into the real world and, and enjoy both camps. Mm -hmm. I was curious if that's I, similar in this Really industry. the same here. I mean, I, I, I've worked over the years with artists who they prefer the street shop feel. Where somebody comes in and just picks a, a piece that we call it tattoo flash, the design's on the wall. Mm -hmm. And they pick, they're like, I want image C4. And you go to a file cabinet and you find image C4 and you make a Xerox copy and do the tattoo. And there are definitely artists to the other extreme that prefer to only ever do custom artwork. Um, that is more the direction I think the industry is moving. You're seeing many more people with uh, four-year art degrees and four-year art degrees with the intent of going into tattooing. Um, so it, that's it, their application essay. Yeah. Yep. That's pretty cool. And it, it just runs the gamut. I, you know, I know for myself, I like to mix uh, a good, a good day for me is maybe a big three or four hour session on a big custom piece I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And then to be able to just kind of work a little more mindlessly on some simple, small, uh, like non custom design. So, right. Right. That's really interesting. Now I'd like to ask about people that are interested in getting into the industry. Maybe they're interested in doing that art degree or they're interested in being a tattoo artist. Uh, what uh, thoughts do you have for that person in terms of figuring out if this is something they might want to do? How do you get started? Um, I, I, I always encourage people to seek an apprenticeship. Um, it's difficult to learn on your own. There's a lot of moving parts. Uh, plus you have the worries about learning um, cross-contamination prevention, bloodborne pathogens, you mm -hmm. know, just the, the medical side of what we do. Um, as, as far as seeking an apprenticeship, uh, I always encourage people, like, A, go get tattoos. If you want to be in this industry, you're going to wind up with some tattoos, most likely. Right. And meet people, meet artists, and find find a shop, find a human that you connect with, and, and seek an mm -hmm. apprenticeship that way. Um, and as far as, you know, I, when I have people approach me for apprenticeship, I, I always hope to see like a, a well-organized portfolio of your non-tattoo art. Just, I want to see if you have a good sense of composition, if you understand color theory, uh, see your, your understanding of line weights. Um, and an organized portfolio will also tell me that you're an organized human, which is another, you know, I, right. so that, those are the things I look for. And how does a, an apprenticeship work? Does the person pay to be an app apprentice? No, I, historically, a lot of apprenticeships were paid. Um, I usually do require an, an upfront payment that ultimately goes to buying your gear when you sort of, you're getting towards graduating for your apprenticeship. I mean, that person's paying you, but then you use that money to give them gear yeah. for them yeah, to Yeah, to buy them their first pair of tattoo machines and the inks right. they're gonna use and just all of the, accoutrement, I guess. And how long does an apprenticeship take on average? Uh, usually about a year. Um, and it, it just always varies on uh, the individual's engagement, how quick are they picking up the skills they need. Mm -hmm. um, and what are you doing in that year? Uh, you're starting out uh, just learning the functionality of the shop. You're cleaning, you're dealing with customers, you're watching tattooing a lot. Um, after your first couple months and, and, and getting an understanding of how the shop works, we'll have you start uh, setting up and tearing down the artist's equipment. So you start understanding how the how our equipment is assembled and how it all works, mm -hmm. uh, working on art, practicing your drawing skills. Um, uh, sometimes if we have hand stencils that need to be made, I will have my apprentice do that for me. Um, but like everything geared towards 
learning the customer service aspects, learning the artistic aspects, and learning the medical concerns. And is there, is there like a structured syllabus or? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No. So you can have some fun. fun. You can have yeah. some fun. That, that's a fun year, I yep. assume. And, and I like having, you know, a shop full of artists with different takes and different, I've always said it takes a village to raise an idiot. So uh, <laughs> for them to be able to get different perspectives and see different techniques and the way different artists go from this, from a handshake with a client to wrapping it up, putting a bandage on at the end of the product right. procedure. Right. Well, that's really interesting. So you've told me a little before about the history of this shop and that mm -hmm. it was a challenge to find a uh, place and to, to get operating. So can you go back to the history of this specific shop or your, your I guess your tattoo work here in Sioux Falls? Sure. Um, I, I came up tattooing in Denver, Colorado. Uh, I did it, I was there for about seven years tattooing. Uh, moved here about 22 years ago. Um, first location was a tiny little 700 square foot shop. Mm -hmm. We were there for about four, and then we moved down the street to a bigger, uh, like, 2,500-square-foot shop. Uh, our current location was always my goal. We are uh, on Phillips Avenue in downtown Sioux Falls, um, literally on one of the two busiest retail blocks in the state, as far as I understand. Mm -hmm. and yeah, it, it was happening last night. Like, tons of people. A few people. Out there, and I assume right? walk-in traffic is a reason you wanted to be down here? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Visibility and, yeah. Um, and it was hard for me to get down here. I, uh, the tattoo industry being what it is, um, I, I spent three years and approached uh, ownership of any of eight to ten different locations. And for three years, as soon as they understood what my business was, I, I couldn't even get a lunch. I couldn't even get a conversation. So, right. Because you're trying to lease a space, right? Yes. You're not... If you, you could have bought a, if there was a building for sale, they couldn't stop you from yeah. buying, right? And you rarely see real estate on the market down here. So. Okay, all right. <laughs> well, and so then how did you, how did you make that first entry or how did you convince them that this is going to be great for the downtown and not the maybe um, preconceived I concerns that they had? finally found the right uh, landowner or right, uh -huh. right, the woman uh, who, She's part of like the Sioux Falls Arts Council and she's interested in the arts. Mm -hmm. um, and I just had to work with her and she was open to it. And it did take some, uh, some finagling and some lunches and discussions. Uh, the fact that we also run an art gallery out of here, I think uh, she was kind of excited about that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it, it took some pounding the pavement. But Yeah, and are you going to like community meetings or is it really just, it was the relationship with the one person that finally broke through? Well, at the point get, uh, getting my business open down here, it was really just with her. I mean, it, mm -hmm. um, we, we initially, we had a few issues. We weren't out of the gates. We weren't incredibly welcome down here. But I think within the first year, I, when they saw that we didn't have Hell's Angels lining the streets and that that <laughs> wasn't really our clientele, right? Um, I, I think people kind of lightened up about it. And I, I think we're a really good fit with the community down here at this point. All right. All right. You All right. Well, that's an uh, interesting first part of the interview. I wanted to show people a little bit and talk about the, the, the space that, that he's in. Um, you know, if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook, these are some pictures and I'll just describe them. This is Jeff, one of his tattoo artists in the background. There is art all over the walls. Uh, here's Jeff again with, uh, you know, some of the chairs in the place in the background. You can see they've got a few people. Everybody's having a good time. Uh, there's, they have the art galleries are kind of, uh, you know, our galleries, I mean, they have like different artists exhibitions on the walls and they've got about seven people or, or seven stations where they can give tattoos. And then in the back of the shop, they've got a uh, piercing uh, area where you can get uh, all kinds of piercings. You can look at all kinds of various options. And so I'm curious, Caden, are you tempted to, by this <laughs> teaser, this little teaser? Are you having I calls? I never really thought I'd ever want a tattoo, but like, as I look at more art and I'm like, Oh, I should get something that's like metaphorical, but I still have no clue. Like, I feel like I'd get sick of it. And you're like, Oh, listen, I'm glad I got this like giant bird on my arm or something. I don't know. Right. But maybe right. one day. What about you? I feel like you have to have a good idea for a tattoo. 
I don't know. Um, if there's there's not an idea in my head, I just feel like my, my body's complete. That's that's right. You don't need anything I else. There's something missing. Uh, so, <laughs> um, but I don't know. Also, then I'm like I'm I'm a pretty boring person with a complete white body. <laughs> that's I guess that's true. What right. what you could do is every sponsor we get, we tattoo their logo onto you somewhere. We're gonna need to up those numbers. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, so we, we I want to get back to uh, the business of tattoos. And uh, before we do that, why don't you tell everybody about uh, how they can support the show and about our sponsors? Of course. So once again, the High Plains Barbershop Chorus and Hayes, thank you for being our sponsor. And also, I might pass this off to you, Justin. You know more about the company, but Reach Tech is also our official sponsor of the Seeking Context podcast. Yeah, that's right. ReachTech.org, making tech simple so you can focus on your mission. If you have a tattoo parlor, or you have a small business or a nonprofit, and you could use help with a website, and you want somebody that's local, somebody that understands the Midwest, and somebody that has a really outstanding design and development team to do complicated things in a simple way for yourself, then uh, check those guys out over at ReachTech.org. And with that, uh, we're going to get back to the interview. Brian okay, Goshel, we're back with Brian Goshel of Vishnu Bunny and uh, interested in learning about the business of running a tattoo shop and yeah. then how you came into the world. So I guess tell me a little bit about your role here at the, uh, at the tattoo shop. I am, uh, I can be called a facilities manager or mm -hmm. I can be called a herder of cats. Uh, basically, uh, Vishnu Bunny tattoo and piercing, my job is to make sure make things run as smooth as we can, or when they don't run smooth, figure out how to smooth them. Right, would be the best way to describe that. Oil and grease, the yes. wheels. Uh, yes, yes, the and uh, the, the bailing wire when that's needed, and the mm -hmm. whole thing. <laughs> right, and so how many staff are we managing uh, on a typical year, and we can also talk about your staffing challenges you've had this last year. So when we're fully staffed, we have, I think, nine, artists, uh, two piercers, and a director of art, a front of house uh, manager, and me, the back of house manager. Okay, That's a, so it's a big operation. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and are most of those people, like how many people can be working at one time? How many? All of them. Oh, okay. Yep. And do you have demand to make that happen? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, that is one of the biggest challenges is uh, our demand. Right, it's just that you have more people wanting tattoos than you have artists. Ever. It's just, <laughs> yeah. a, like if we, if I staff up to completely full, uh, that leads to more people wanting to come here and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Right, it's like a virtuous circle of pain. Yeah. It's a good <laughs> way to it. It seems to always expand, but it never contracts when the staff Right, passes. right, 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 right. right. Once it we've established that. <laughs> right. How do you recruit? What do you do for recruiting? How do you find the people, the right people? And so that's really the biggest challenge that we face on a daily basis when it comes to that. Uh, the, the problem is we are in a community of two hundred thousand people, so just simple math would tell us that there's not a lot of tattoo artists mm -hmm. that are floating free. Where if you were in a large, you know, a large market, New York, Chicago, Minneapolis, even uh, Denver, these different places, uh, there are there, uh, regardless of it's tattoo or advertising or whatever those those careers are that have uh, people that are art artists. Uh, right. There's always free floating artists that are looking for the next best thing. So it's easy. Mm -hmm. Here it's not that easy. So you got to find them from out of town. from out of town. Is right. the big way it happens and. We, we, uh, we raise our own, so to speak. We start off with a, an apprentice mm -hmm. uh, that shows interest and you build them up from the beginning. All right, and we have um, some apprentices, like are there people on the floor right now that are apprentices? We have one, we have okay. one apprentice right now. All right, so it's open if somebody wants to um, come in and apprentice or if you're already a tattoo artist, you've got plenty of work here. Uh, this Absolutely. sounds like unlimited work. Uh, literally, we have unlimited work here if you'd like to. This is how, any way you can. <laughs> Right. This is how you do it. Truly, that's how you right. hire any way you can. And okay, so tell me about I guess Sioux Falls, because you got to make a case for your business. 
you got to make a case for living here. What's right. It, what's it like living right. here? It seems pretty cool on a Friday and Saturday night. Uh, to me, first time visitor. So uh, for me, uh, Sioux Falls is some place, uh, you might be able to tell I'm not from Sioux Falls. I'm, I'm originally from the East Coast, New York, no. New Jersey. I okay. uh, lived in San Francisco, li lived all over the country. And I, I chose to come here and raise my, my child, as well, my children. <laughs> I want to do that. Um, the, the reasons are many. First of all, I find myself and you find yourself in kind of the, uh, the apex of liberalism within a very red state. This is mm -hmm. a very red state. Yeah. We are the red state that other red states hope to become. We're so red. <laughs> uh, we are. Quintessential. Uh, but Sioux Falls is not a red city. It's purple. It really mm -hmm. is. Um, we, we have a very vibrant uh, uh, alternative lifestyle community here. Mm -hmm. We have a very vibrant music community. We have a very vibrant uh, artist community here. Uh, acceptance is really high compared to the rest of the state, compared to a lot of the surrounding areas of the Midwest. Sioux Falls right. has like a hundred, I'm swagging the number, it's like 130 different languages spoken here. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, didn't know that. No, I did not. Um, so that's what's going on. Uh, uh, cost of living is, is much less, much, much, much less. Right. Uh, it's getting smaller, it truly is getting smaller. Uh, but it is less, and there's a lot of really good things to do here. If you like nature, there's nature. If you if you want to go see races, you can go see you know short track races. Whatever you want to do, you can probably find to do here. Right. And so uh, when you got into this business, Jeff, when what happened when you're like, I need a manager, and then how did you find one? I, and was also is this your first attempt at at, at uh, businessizing this business? I. Sort of. Um, I, the need for a manager really came the first time um, about 10 years into my venture owning this business here. I took a six month hiatus and moved to Orlando. And Brian actually stepped in at that point this was, uh, and helped me with the financial, getting payroll done on the weekends, those types of things. Mm -hmm. And I kind of got a taste of that kind of cooperation. Um, and then as we moved downtown and grew, it just became apparent that we were. You know, we tattooers get into this. Typically, you see a lot of uh, they don't like authority. They don't like. It. But the, the business was getting to a point that it needed at least a little bit of corporate sensibility. Mm -hmm. There had to be some baseline rules and functionality just to to stop the chaos. Of, right. Some structure was yes, needed. Yes, absolutely at that point yeah and go ahead so what, what i found when i came here was um, the tattoo artist is a person who doesn't want to have a normal nine to five job uh, doesn't want to know about 401ks hr uh, uh, requesting pto even what the letters pto means they don't want to know what that <laughs> stuff is but the problem is is they're all independent contractors so they wind up having to be their own hr their own insurance they own all these things, and no one has showed them how to do that. Mm -hmm. They have fought hard to not learn that stuff so they could be independent, but the reality is is they're making bank, and they need to figure out how to, who is their, their insurance agent? How do they get insurance? Who is doing their taxes? Are they even doing taxes? All right. those things, and that's kind of what I helped bring. Right, because everyone in, on the floor is 1099? Yes. They set their own hours, they come in when they want, they find their own clients. I assume you sort of partner on yeah, yeah. The, the, the marketing aspect yep. of the business. Yeah, and, um, and we try to have cooperation. I, right, with that, that employee-employer relationship, that version of it, I, obviously I, I can't dictate what anyone works, but just out of a need to cooperate and everyone wanting the business to run smoothly, we do pretty well as far as understanding when we have to be staffed. And, Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. And I'm curious, can you talk about what we were talking about yesterday about the different models of tattoo shops that some have booth rentals and some, I don't know what all the models are. Maybe that's that I, yours. It, and booth those are basically the, the two different models for a tattoo business are either uh, just a straight booth rental, which I think is more similar to a lot of uh, hair salons, mm -hmm. uh, that type of arrangement. And then uh, just a, a straight commission pay schedule. Right, and this is all commission. Um, yes. Right. 
Yeah. And if if a person was doing a booth rental, then what would a what would a normal booth cost a tattoo artist? And do they and do they do they float? Also, I was curious about. You know, I I have never crunched the numbers on doing booth rental. I wouldn't. I'm not even certain where to start. Um, I, I suppose I just have to sort of take an average over the last two years of what each booth generated and compare that to what my costs for overhead are. And right, right. Come but this is the model figure. that you like, yeah. that, that works for you. And it, 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 there's a lot of things. The size of a shop, the geography of a shop, uh, like as far as what city you're in and where you are within that city. Mm -hmm. um, can all be contributing to factors as far as which business model is gonna make most sense. Right. So for either one of you, can you talk about the challenges you're having now? Uh, post COVID, sounds like demand is up, but that finding people to work is really challenging. How big is that problem for you at this moment in time? It's large. Um, it, it is. Uh, throughout this, so we came in one day before COVID, there was the normal stress of any shop that every shop has, right? Again, refer back to the, the people, they're awesome, but they're stress, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're being forced to fit into a, a capitalist box that they just don't want to be in, most right. of them, right? Kind of deal. But they want the fruits of the capitalism, right? Mm -hmm. So, which is just the way it works. Then we all came in one day and we closed. We just closed. And then everybody went their own separate ways and weren't yeah. open for a while. Turn about March 2020. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And we were closed for three months. Five uh, months. Like about two five months. months. Two months. Two months. Yeah. It felt like a year. Okay. <laughs> kind okay. of deal. <laughs> um, and then we came back in slowly. And what I th and that he had said, and he, his mantra throughout this whole thing was, uh, COVID has messed us all up as far as our interactions and what we do and how we act and towards other people and ourselves. And, mm -hmm. it's a, and now on the other side, what I'm coming up with is um, uh, an artist who is a highly skilled, uh, usually highly intelligent, seriously, mm -hmm. super smart person, independent, uh, found themselves outside of that capitalist treadmill and they are not wanting to come back inside. Okay. They're just right. not wanting to get back in that treadmill, and but they understand they kind of need to, so they start to come back into that treadmill, and and the rebellion against it is strong, valid, understandable, well, but yet there's still a business that has to run, so right. they have a place to play. <laughs> and, and it works. I, I, I certainly don't think that's specific to our industry. No, no, it's, everything. Right, yeah. right, right. And and it almost what. What really strikes me is that in this industry, everyone that works here can really set, they can set their own wages, they can set, they can determine their income. So it's sort of this bleed over from some of the, I, I get where people are upset with low wages and rising costs, and I understand that. But this um, isn't a low wage no, career No, we, we've at all. sort of been safe from that, but it, it's sort of like philosophical bleed over from that, that type of thinking, it, it sort right. of feels like. Right, right. Yeah. And, but I mean, but you do have flexibility, like I assume, well, I guess if you want to come and work here, do, you, do they need to commit to a num certain number of days a week, a certain number of hours, or are people coming in and like, I'll work four hours a week or something? Is that, so how does the model work? When I have a new hire, I usually, we just have sort of an interview to bring them on board after they've already been hired. And part of that is, what do you want your schedule to look like? How many hours do you want to work? What, what days are best for you? What times? And I, we do everything we can to just accommodate that. Um, yeah, I, that, that being said, uh, there's a, a business that has a rent and you got to pay for the lights and there's people walking by. So I can't on a Friday have 98% of my staff off playing because they didn't want to be here. Right. That's, that's the, that's the contract actually, if you think about it. And that's that larger capitalism contract. Right. You're going to give me your time. I'm going to give you a place to do your thing. Right. And it's frustrating. It feels like, though, that there's, I, mean, I sense a good sense of community if you do join Absolutely. this organization. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and that people have fun. Yes. Do you know where all of those people went? But I mean, it does seem like it's nationwide in all industries. But where are these people? What are they doing? What, do we have a theory on this? Are they, in, are they in San Francisco and LA and New York? Or have they left working? 
I don't know. Um, I, it almost kind of reminds me, we, we sort of joke, like in, in more of the fine arts community, that you've got this small group of people that all support each other, or in, or in a, a small local music scene or whatever. We kind of call it past the $20 bill. They all show up and support each other's art shows and buy art from each other. Mm -hmm. And it almost feels like that's what's happening in, in the tattoo world, at least in our Sioux Falls microcosm. People are just kind of moving between shops and, and seeing where they can get the right fit, the right feel, what they're looking for. Um, and, and that's part of the struggle is trying to sort of evolve with what people are looking for and need. How do you, how do you try to maintain your business? And allow your business to survive while trying to accommodate the needs of the people who will ostensibly be working. Right, right. The reality is, is Vishnu Bunny specifically is a, a large, chaotic shop. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, there's a lot of people coming in. There's more messages to be answered than humans that can answer that. And that causes stress on some folks. Mm -hmm. And it's gone. And that's the way it is. Uh, there's other folks, we have them here, that thrive in that environment, who want that environment. Right. And understand making six figures a year lets them play the way they want to when they're not in that environment. Right. And it's a really realistic number. It really is. As you pointed out, uh, we've kind of bypassed that contraction. You, you would think that a tattoo is a complete vanity thing and not a need that would go away during a downturn or a raise and, and, and you know, all the problems financial. Right. Nope. I haven't seen it yet. Well, um, my demo is uh, female, aged 18 to 36, um, upperly mobile. That's who's the main demographic right here. So yeah, and that was a surprising thing you mentioned yesterday. Can you talk about the, the client mix, female, male, and I mean, you just said that, that that's your primary demo. So, you wanna go? Let me go. Yeah, and, and that is, we, we track the numbers through various different social media and different places that we can quantify and find out those numbers. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is skewed a bit, I think, by the fact that we do piercings, because that is a heavily, heavily female slice of what we do. Mm -hmm. um, I, if I had to guess, which he probably knows, um, if we only looked at tattooing, I, I would venture to guess that it's about 60% female, 40% male, Is that right? largely in that same age group. Okay. Um, but the piercing kind of just skews that number to more female clients. Yeah. The first time I met Jeff, uh, somebody brought him to my house, and I started out with, oh God, who brought this meth head to my house? He's into <laughs> tattooing. What am I doing? Oh, what's going on? Because we were a suit at the and, time. And by the, yeah, it was pure suit. So by the end of the night, we were talking about how Shelby Foote's second volume is the best in the Civil War, but there's so much more there, and we were just just best friends then. Um, <laughs> seriously. And was this what, a wedding reception? I feel like I've No, that was before, before that, right? No, no that, that was, was the wedding was reception. reception. Yeah, that was yeah. the wedding reception, yeah. Yeah. right. So you just thought that, like, who brought this meth head to the yes. wedding? Yes, <laughs> I, I was the meth head plus one. Yes. Yeah. I think it was crackhead, actually. Okay, yeah, it might have been crackhead. <laughs> um, but my point being is, is there is this, and even under someone, maybe that says more about my past than theirs, but um, uh, uh, the reality is, much like the Harley, uh, uh, Mystique. It's, it's expensive to get a tattoo. It's expensive to get good jewelry and a good mm -hmm. piercing. The people that are coming here have some money. Right. They, they're, they're a more uh, stable, rational place in the rest of their life. Uh, our shop is inviting. Our shop is open. The reason I think our demo is the demo it is, is because there is no walls there between the tattoo things. The windows are big. We have people come in all the time to see just the art. We, every once a month, throw a party. We literally close on a Friday night once a month, shut down all income coming in, and put artists up on the wall and, and hope they sell their work. That's we cool. We give out beer and we give out hot dogs and we have a great time and people see that we are not some scary biker club type thing that right. to be feared and they love it. That's great. Love it. So, that's great. And uh, talk about your background just a little bit. How did you, when, when did, you talked about sort of on when we're on break, that 
there was like a moment when you're like, I don't have to be a suit anymore. Like, right. Was it this opportunity right. that right. brought you to that, or was it something no. in your own so, life? So, so I, um, I was parachuted out of my last job. Uh, it was the third that there's a old commercial. I have scraped my way up to middle management and some kid talking like that <laughs> and, and that was me, right? I had scraped my way up to middle management and once again been parachuted out. So I wasn't working. Um, I had briefly talked about uh, dishwashing for someone while working in management just so I could forget the horror of corporate land. <laughs> it's true. Uh, I, I, I started working with a dear friend cutting lawns as a mm -hmm. as a middle aged man, right? And it's not that's. I'm sure my parents wouldn't have been proud if that was what I said I was doing, but it was probably right. the best thing for me at the time. You didn't put this on your LinkedIn profile, lawn mower. Oh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Shows versatility. Right. I'm fairly certain I did actually. <laughs> Something just came up from LinkedIn. I haven't seen LinkedIn in a while, and I thought somebody. I was like, oh, look at that. Anyway, I'd like to point out I did not find him on. No, okay. no, no, he found me on my back deck when I was judging him. That's how we found him. Um, so I, 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 I had done the thing that he had said where he went away for a few months and I kind of, while having another job, just kind of like babysat the house basically. And since I could do math, I could pay the bills, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of deal. And, and we would have conversations all the time and that helped me learn. I am not a tattoo artist. Uh, historically, non-tattoo artists business runners of a tattoo shop do not do well because right. I don't understand. Right. right, it's kind of like a, a non-physician running a hospital. They yes, hate it. exactly. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. So um, I uh, wisely kept my mouth shut a lot and asked him gobs and gobs of questions. Mm -hmm. Then I saw that he needed a, he had lost his shop manager and I said, I want to do that. I told the person I was working with, cutting lawns with, and he's like, yeah, that's a great idea. Um, and he wouldn't let me do it for almost a year. I, I just wore him down, it's basically. I wore him mm. down. And I did. I wore him down. And I've been doing it now, I don't know how many years. I have no idea. I've been doing it for a while now. Um, I, I will never, I will never go back. Ever. Right. Never. This is your program. <laughs> this is my, yes. Right. Yes. And I see that you do have a tattoo. Did you start getting tattoos after you came to know Jeff and came to know the shop? Yeah, so I came here with one tattoo on my leg, which has since been covered up by this wonderful man. Uh, I now have gobs of tattoos. Uh, I'm a scratch pad for new people. I'm more than willing to let you put a tattoo on me if, if you were an apprentice and okay. it's not your third tattoo. I probably have a half a dozen of them. I have a half a dozen from, from Jeff here. Uh, a new artist comes in, I get one, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. They're like, show me what you can do. I am an athlete. No, no, no. Please help me. I, I want okay. a tattoo. I, I, I am, that is back to that kind of thing of uh, not being a tattoo uh, uh, artist. I don't ever critique things other than that looks awesome. Okay. <laughs> because Whatever they do is awesome. I stay in my lane. Right. <laughs> kind of deal. If I truly think it's not awesome, thinks it's not awesome. Yeah. That was awesome. It's not um, awesome. I go to him and say, Google like that. <laughs> <laughs> but at that point, it's it's pretty late. So. Right, right. Uh, anything new on the horizon for uh, the shop? Parties coming up? Um, we've, we've kind of been doing an extended two month sort of celebration of our 10th anniversary in this location. Uh, I think we discussed earlier what how difficult it was you did to it. Get, yeah. gain this location. Um, so yeah, our next art show uh, is just a continuation of the artists we're currently featuring, but we're actually having some live music. A uh, great band called Low Rats coming down from right. Minneapolis. Rats. Come see Low Rats. Um, and so no plans to open a new, another one in Denver, no. back home, or franchise? I used to think about it, but now no. I Please would, don't okay, do you're, you're happy with I, your one <laughs> world that's do. working. Dude, just but. give me a panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I, yeah, but post COVID, or I, I don't know, is that what we call yeah, it? Yeah, I think um, so. They call it BC it, it, before it, COVID. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that. It changed. It changed a lot, and it added a lot of difficulty to keeping all the parts oil. And I, this is this is enough. Right, and it, it doesn't yet. Yeah, I mean, it feels like demands back, but nobody's really figured out 
what this new normal is going to be like. You're, you're still in the yeah. under figuring it out phase. Yep. Would that be accurate? Cool. Well, if people want to find out about the show, or I mean about the show, about the shop, mm -hmm. um, I assume you're online. Yep. You're on Instagram. You're yep. on a bunch of social media places. Facebook, yep. Instagram, absolutely. Website. Yeah. Vishnu um, Bunny. Vishnu Bunny Tattoo. It, it's not a lot is going to come up in a web shirt to search <laughs> if you put those three words. You don't have so, to do a lot of SEO. No, no, no. Doing no. articles because Vishnu Bunny. But Where I did do. the name come from? Um, I, when we first started, I actually had some business partners, and it was one of mine was a big fan of a painter named Mark Ryden, and he had a painting that fit, featured the Vishnu Bunny. He, it, he thought it was a good idea, and it kind of stuck. So, and so that's that. And you, you talked about. I was just curious, as an aside, the the sign in front of your shop has an interesting history. The the, the one that's mm -hmm. that says Vishnu Bunny. Can you yeah, just tell I, that story a little bit? Yeah, a former employee here made that sign. Uh, his family has a history of they they are sign makers like i know his grandfather bent neon and um which is kind of just a rare quirky skill set but yeah he put some beautiful work in with like real beveled edges and real gold leaf and it's a very throwback historical artisan piece i guess right right yeah all right well this has been great if you want to come and get a tattoo it's vishnu bunny in sioux falls South Dakota. If you're interested in working in a tattoo shop, you can come be an apprentice. If you're already a tattoo artist, you can come make over a hundred thousand dollars in South Dakota. Sounds like a pretty good gig. <laughs> That's to about me. the best way to put it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for like opening this whole world to me and to uh, my modest viewership. <laughs> well, thanks for having us. Thanks. All right. Take care. This is right. great. <laughs>